first things first, gotta tear it off. So we got most of this thing demoed. Gonna peel out the rest of the insulation. This is a south facing wall and it just gets beat with the sun in the summertime. I mean, out here where we live, it can get up to 110 and above. This wall just let in so much heat. So what we're gonna try doing, actually, since we're doing this whole thing, we might as well take it a little further and fix some issues and see if we can't make it more efficient than it is now. So, took out the insulation and I'm replacing it with, that that's in there now is like an R11 and I'm gonna be replacing it with an R15 um, rock wool insulation. It's a lot denser, has a higher R value than just a normal fiberglass insulation. Since we're doing that, we are replacing the windows. The ones that were in there, metal frame, aluminum frame, and they were leaking. The, the dual panes were not doing what they're supposed to do. The only tricky thing is, with these modulars, they are very, the windows are very odd sized. So, for example, that window was uh, 46 and a half by 40. I'm not sure why. A typical window is going to be usually in foot increments. Um, so, I got to change some framing up on that. Another odd thing about this is it doesn't have any headers on this side. I don't work on modulars very much. So I'm basically, I'm just gonna take out that stud, extend that, I guess you would call it a header, and then extend the sill and put another stud on the side there because I need an inch and a half and that's what it'll give me. This window here is actually where our bathtub is, which at some point will be a shower. So I'm actually just gonna do a little uh, kind of, I guess you'd almost call it a bathroom window, not very tall and that'll be in the shower area and that'll give us more room for shower. Ran into some rot. So, gonna have to fix that. Then we can get to the fun stuff, putting up the reflective plywood. Let's get back to it. Day two. Today we're gonna hopefully get up siding. Or, yeah, hopefully siding and the uh, foil backed plywood. I just wanted to show you this wall real quick with the insulation and what we did. So let's check it out. This was getting a new vinyl window. Cut this old stud out, put a new stud here to get my 48 inches because this was 46. New sill. I did double up the header material and the sill material because this thing's built with match sticks and it doesn't have much going on structurally. The nice part about the plywood is it'll give the building some shear because concrete doesn't necessarily have much shear value to it. It's really brittle. The bathroom got rid of the big nasty, went with a little shower window, kind of a odd framing style, but there's no really structure on this side of the building, so I got the rot replaced. First thing we're gonna do is paper the wall. We're kinda doing this a little different. We're going to vapor barrier, plywood, stickers, vapor barrier, and then 
concrete siding. Let's get started. Storms are coming. Better get this thing finished. We have the radiant barrier plywood up. Then we put on these uh, three quarter inch bats. The theory is that the heat hits the building, bounces back off, and then there's gonna be a gap up top and the soffit will be vented. So the heat should rise up and then come out. And there'll also be a gap at the bottom of the siding. So it's pretty much there's airflow behind the siding that's why we papered behind the plywood. But now we're going to paper on top of the bats in order to kind of keep the weather out from getting into the plywood. I guess it makes sense. <laughs> So the plan with this, because the air gap, it'll keep the bugs out. So I put it behind and stapled it to the siding here and then folded it over, and stapled it here. It is kind of crude now, but the siding, once it's up, we'll pinch it in there. And then you'll notice that it's kind of flexed out, but once the siding goes up, it should push up and kind of sandwich it in there and hold it pretty tight.
So what we got here is Z-Bar. Basically it just creates a somewhere for the water to go. It'll the siding goes over this and then the water will run down and over the face of this and then down the next sheet of uh, siding. So let's go ahead and put this up. Typically when I'm putting up Z-Bar I will use a uh, roofing nail just because it's really flat on the head compared to like a, a 16 or not a 16 but an 8 penny nail. Overlap at least uh, 6 inches if not more. Well I think that's enough for today. I think another storm's coming. It's only taken me a week to get this thing done with all the rain, so see you tomorrow.